Today is the disappearance day of Shri Narutam Das Thakur. So uh, rather than starting with Jai Radha Madhav like we normally do, we can start with this Bhajan Jaya Nilo Premadhana that is uh, sung uh, during the dis for the disappearance of the Acharyas. And what's very uh, uh, special is that this very song is also written by Narutam Das Thakur. So today we're observing the disappearance of Narutam Das Thakur and this bhajan was written by him uh, as a as a expression of the separation that he felt from the great devotees of the Lord, of Lord Chaitanya and he was surely one of them so we can sing this song for him today. It's Jaya Nilo Madhana and uh, Mother Madhuri has uh, copies of these. doing a lot of singing so I'll just maybe move down here because it's going to it's not working so. Uh, today is the disappearance day of Narutam Das Thakur. We'll sing a few of his bhajans in addition to talking a little bit about his life and especially his disappearance. So um, we will uh, sing others as well.
Lars Harper aqui. So we can now uh, read the translation. Uh, maybe different devotees can take turns reading the translation. Oh, I took the, the... Oh, that's okay. Uh, but others have it? I see. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, just a few devotees. We just need four or five. Someone can go first. That personality delivered the treasure of Prima Bhakti who was so intense with compassion. Where is it? I think you had. Where is your personality? Can you speak louder? And you have to find your voice. That personality delivered the treasure of Prima Bhakti who was so intense with compassion. Where is the personality Where are my Raghunath Bhatta and Gopal Bhatta? And where is Krishna Das Kaviraj? Where did Lord Garanga, the great dancer, suddenly go? Are we done? No, I'm sorry. Yes, okay. So this is um, Srila Naradam Das Thakur uh, weeping uh, due to the separation of the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. Um, Srila Naratam Das Thakur, he appeared after Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left this world. And the story of his appearance is as special as the story of his disappearance. Uh, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, towards the end of his pastimes, at a certain point, um, he was thinking that now I'm leaving and uh, this love of God that I brought, who will I give it to? Who will I pass it forward? You know, who will take it forward? Uh, because uh, love of God is always received in the descending process. So, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to give it to someone who could then give it to others, who could then give it to others. So one time he started to, um, uh, uh, to call out the name of one devotee who people didn't know who, who that was. He was crying and he was dancing and he was chanting out, Narutam, Narutam, Narutam. Where are you, Narutam? And Lord Nityananda Prabhu was uh, next to Lord Chaitanya and he, uh, um, he was next to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he could understand what was going on. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him that my dear devotee, Narutam Das Thakur, he will appear and he will uh, inundate the world with this love of God. But I need to give it to him in some way. So in order to give this uh, love for him, the next day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he went into the river Ganges and he took a bath. And there uh, he submerged himself in the water. And when he submerged himself in the water, then uh, uh, but, but Padmavati, was it? Yes, yes. She, uh, the Padmavati River, sorry, not the Ganges River. She came out of the waters in the form, in her personified form, and offered her respects to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at that time told her that, I will uh, give you this love of God, and you kindly keep it with yourself. And then one great devotee, my servant Narutam Das Thakur, he will come, and when he comes, then you give this love of God to him. So she very uh, gratefully accepted this love of God. But she asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, she said, when Narutam Das Thakur comes, how will I recognize him? How will I recognize that this is the person that I need to give this love of God to? And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he says that you will recognize 
him because when he enters your waters, you, are, you will overflow. You will overflow because his own love for Krishna is so great that it will cause your waters to overflow. And then you know that this is the right person and then to him you can give him this love of Krishna. And then uh, Padmavati Devi, she asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu another question. He said that if he already has so much love of God that when he enters into these waters, the whole river will overflow, then how will he handle this new love that you're giving me, this additional love of God that you're giving me when I give it to him? Uh, what will happen then? And Sri and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, don't worry, he will, he will be able to absorb it all. Uh, it is my, my blessing, it is my desire. So you simply give this to him and he will then take it, he will accept it. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives this love of Krishna to Padmavati uh, and then the waters overflow and then when Narutam Das Thakur comes um, some years later, then when he bathes, this love of Krishna is given to him. So Narutam Das Thakur, aside from meeting uh, Jiva Goswami and a few others, Srinivas Acharya, uh, I believe Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami also, he didn't meet any of the associates of Lord Chaitanya. But being an associate of Lord Chaitanya, he was always in separation, in great separation uh, from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Janava Mata also gave uh, love of Krishna to him uh, just by seeing him through her eyes, she imparted love of God to Naratam Das Thakur. So he was just like a, you could say, a, a sponge that absorbed love of Krishna from all of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his close associates. And this love of God, he then gave to all of us. He sort of shared it with the whole world through his songs, through his bhajans, which are now known as prarthana. So therefore, among all the Vaishnava Acharyas, Srila Prabhupada's, uh, um, you could say, like all the other Vaishnava Acharyas, but also showing the unique position of Narutam Das Thakur's songs. He specifically mentions that Narutam Das Thakur's songs are non-different than Vedic mantras, Vedic uh, books. That there's no difference between his songs and the Srimad Bhagavatam. There's no difference between his songs and the Chaitanya Chatamrita because of who he was and what he was able to give us. Um, so we find here in this bhajan that he's, he's asking where have these great personalities gone? Where are these um, uh, great devotees of the Lord? And in their separation, uh, because I'm not receiving their mercy, I want to smash my head against the rock and enter into the fire. So um, uh, he, is, um, he is so attached to, to the devotees of the Lord to Lord Chaitanya and his associates, that he is finding it unbearable to live without them. And um, this actually, this conversation takes place in his own pastimes, in Narodham Das Thakur's pastimes, that someone may ask that, you know, why this great attachment? It seems like a form of almost family attachment, that one is attached uh, to, just like materialists are attached to their family members, Naratam Das Thakur is attached to these devotees and cannot live without them. But no, this is of a completely different nature. The attachment to the devotees of the Lord is precisely what replaces material uh, family attachment, material attachments, where um, it is the nature of the soul to be attached and the way we can overcome our material attachments is by becoming very attached to the devotees of the Lord. Very, very attached to uh, the unalloyed uh, you know, devotees of the Lord and taking their shelter. By taking their shelter, we can give up the mundane shelter. Um, and uh, we see this in the lives of all the great devotees that they were uh, very deeply, very closely attached to uh, other devotees. Even in modern times, uh, in, you know, the disciples of Srila Prabhupada are, are very, um, attached to one another. Uh, many of them have close friends. Some of them they know just as acquaintances. But this was something I think that Srila Prabhupada also imbibed in his uh, movement, that the feeling of 
uh, that taking sh refuge or taking shelter in the devotees and seeing them as our dearest friends, uh, what to speak of offending them or fighting with them, but actually seeing them as our friends who can help us go back home, back to Godhead. Um, uh, there's um, a nice example that's given. It's just like uh, when you go to the Kumbha Mela, then the Kumbha Mela is the largest gathering of people in the world. It's in the Guinness Book of World Records. So millions and millions of people arrive on the banks of the Ganges. And they all want to take bath at that same moment, at that same time to get the nectar from the Ganges. And so all these millions of people go. And if you go there early and you stand right at the bank of the river, then when the moment comes, you can take a bath. But it's a little risky because you have millions of people behind you. So they'll be pushing in as well. So the government of India, in order to uh, you know, protect the lives of people, what they actually do is they make the whole Ganges, they put dirt into the Ganges, and they make it like a swimming pool. It's a waist deep from one side to the other side. So if you get pushed from the back, you'll get pushed on the other side, and you can walk across. So it's somewhat nicely managed. Um, but the point being that when you're right there next to the Ganges, then, and there's uh, you know, thousands of people behind you pushing in the same direction, then at the moment when you need to take the bath, even if you change your mind, at that point you cannot change your mind. You're going to get pushed in. You're going to get inundated. Uh, at that time you have a you know, the crisis of faith. If you try to run the other side, no way, you cannot do that. You will be pushed into the Ganges. So we want to surround ourselves with devotees like this. Uh, in this similar way, this is our process, to surround ourselves with devotees, such that even if at, at a certain point we have a crisis of faith, or we are you know, becoming inundated with material desires, being surrounded with them, they will push us forward into the Ganges, into the Ganges of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. And even if we want to turn back, we will not be able to turn back because we will have devotees all around us. Right? We will be inundated by their, by their mercy. So, uh, Narutam Das Thakur here is feeling great separation from these devotees, uh, these, these kind-hearted and, and, and exalted devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he's also feeling so grateful for their association. So, uh, so much gratitude for who they were and what they gave us. You know, what, what they offered us was so wonderful. We, we don't understand how wonderful it is. That's why we uh, are unable to take it seriously. We sometimes don't take it seriously. But if we actually understood what they gave us, um, we, would, we would feel so fortunate. So he's expressing this gratitude. And in the same way, we can also, on the appearance and disappearance days of these great souls, we can feel great gratitude that what they have given us, how special is their mercy, is their contribution. Uh, Narutam Das Thakur did not have to give his songs to us, but because he gave us his songs, we can understand just a little bit about, you know, what is Lord Chaitanya's mercy or who is uh, Radha and Krishna. And the mood of a devotee, he's revealing through his songs. And uh, through these songs, is, he's liberating the entire world. So we can feel this gratitude. And when we feel this gratitude towards these acharyas, through these devotees who are around us and the previous devotees, uh, then, then, we can, uh, then Lord Krishna becomes very, very merciful to us. Then he becomes very kind to us. Um, just yesterday, uh, His Holiness Varsana Maharaj was mentioning how uh, he felt his, that, uh, quoting Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj, that gratitude is the um, bridge from the material world to the spiritual world. That uh, it is gratitude that connects us from between these two worlds. When we actually feel so grateful for the mercy of the Lord, then we will realize that whatever difficulties we are going through are just a small small price to pay for, for something that we don't deserve, that is so, so amazing. It's the greatest gem. And um, there's one uh, also passage in, in Narutam Das Thakur's life where it says that the, the, the mercy and dust of the devotees of the Lord 
are more valuable than millions of gems, gemstones, millions of jewels. And therefore, one should not give up or one should seek the mercy of the devotees even if it means exchanging them or you could say giving up millions of gems, millions of gemstones. Um, and this we see that some very fortunate devotees, they, they realize this. Um, I heard that uh, this was true about the life of Mother Yamuna, um, Yamuna Devi, uh, who was serving Srila Prabhupada. And at a certain point, George Harrison offered her, like a, offered her to essentially join their band. And he said, if you join us, I'll make you one of the most famous singers in all of North America or all, all the whole world. Uh, the Beatles were the most famous musical band of that time and continue to be. Um, and he made her this amazing offer he, because he really liked her voice and you know, her, who she was. And she said, if you just join us, we will make, I will make you one of the most famous musicians in the whole, uh, whole world. But she would not give up the shelter of Srila Prabhupada and join the Beatles. Even though one could say, oh, she could engage it in Prabhupada's service. Is this true, Mother Malati? Invite her to join the Beatles, mm -hmm. that would have been not his role. Ah. He said, I can make you famous. Ah, I can. Mm -hmm. So she was considering, well, everything can be used for Christian consciousness, and we were struggling greatly to establish a mm -hmm. good hold in Britain. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so she said, let me think about this. So she considered overnight, but the next day she declined because she said she feared it would interrupt with her ability to remain devotional because we'd already had the experience through the record in the Ralph Pentagon Hall and the Rock of Forever. And we then sent out all over Europe and generally in nightclubs and rock and roll venues. So we, you know, had a taste of what that so called fame could be like. And she realized that becoming famous came with a price. That price was that she didn't want to lose Wow. So it was even um, less, uh, you could say, um, it was an easier, even easier offer to accept. He was just saying, I'll just make you one of the most famous musicians. Um, you can continue uh, everything. But she gave up that uh, because she was uh, afraid of, uh, she, she was afraid of, of, of the fame that it would bring and losing Srila Prabhupada's association, or temporarily at least. So, uh, this is something that, uh, you know, we, we uh, I personally in my own life uh, came, you know, uh, made this mistake many times, is, is to pursue material things or material, you know, things that seem to be very important, even in terms of our spiritual life, but at the expense of not getting the association of the devotees. And that can be a great loss because, um, the association of these devotees is more valuable than any other material benefit that we can get, the, you know, the, the jewels of this material world. So, Naratham Das Thakur, when he, um, uh, he, it's, uh, he, he was preaching in so many different ways, and uh, at a certain point, he, he wanted to uh, focus more on the writing of his songs, and absorbing himself in the holy name. So this is his disappearance pastime. And he thought that while he established Krishna consciousness in Keturi Gram, which is current day Bangladesh, and it's very, uh, very relevant that we're speaking of him today because of the great atrocities uh, that happened in Bangladesh just recently towards the devotees. Um, he made the whole, whole land devotees, Krishna conscious devotees, just by his influence. So naturally when he was preaching so much, then he uh, felt that this is, uh, you know, he didn't have a free moment. Every moment someone was coming, asking him something or disturbing him in some way, uh, just like great preachers are always, you know, uh, always in demand. So he was everywhere, going everywhere, and he thought that it's impossible for me to do this in this atmosphere. So he and his dear friend Ramachandra Kaviraj, they decided to go to the forest to engage in bhajan. 
enchanting the holy names and writing his songs. And again, this is towards the end of his pastimes. So he was showing how a devotee lives. His whole life was dedicated to preaching and sharing Krishna consciousness and tasting Krishna consciousness himself. But towards the end, he was now doing like Nirjan Bhajan. He was going into his Samadhi, like all great devotees, many great devotees have done. So Ramachandra Kaviraj and Naratam Das Thakur, they go to the forest. They have a little hut there. And they start chanting and chanting and also fasting. And so he becomes very weak, very old, very thin, just living off a of very little food and chanting day and night. And uh, his disciple Ganga Narayan uh, Prabhu would come from time to time and well, every day and give them their prasad and then leave. So one day Ganga Narayan came and he informed Narutam Das Thakur and Ramachandra Kaviraj that there is a message from Shamananda Prabhu. Shamananda Prabhu was a contemporary of Narutam Das Thakur. And because of losing all the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Narutam Das Thakur was very close to Ramachandra Kaviraj. And therefore he actually writes a song in which he mentions his name, which we will sing, a bhajan. Um, and so they were always together, they're inseparable. They're like, you know, preaching together, serving together, uh, very close, again, showing how devotee relationships and devotee association can be so close. They were like, it's described uh, one soul in two bodies. This is how close they were. Always sharing Krishna consciousness with one another, tasting Krishna consciousness. And so this message from Shamananda Prabhu comes and they're very curious, what is the message? Um, and so it's given to, it's a message for Ramachandra Kaviraj and Ganga Narayan gives the letter to him and he opens it up and he reads the letter and what does it say? It says, uh, Shamananda Prabhu says that I am very old and I'm wanting to go to Vrindavan to, you know, for my final years and so please kindly come. The distance is very long and I need the help of my disciple, yourself, to take me to Vrindavan. Naratam Das Thakur and Ramachandra Kaviraj were also thinking of going to Vrindavan, but Naratam Das Thakur by that time was so old, it was not possible for him to travel so much. Also, he wanted to stay close to K3 Gram. So, um, he receives this instruction to go and serve Shamananda Prabhu, Ramachandra Kaviraj Das. And this is the instruction of his guru, his spiritual master. So, he, they both know he cannot say no to it. But then that means that he'll be separated from Narutam Das Thakur. So he becomes greatly aggrieved. Uh, on one hand, very happy to receive the association of his spiritual master and this instruction. But on the other hand, Narutam Das Thakur and Ramachandra Kaviraj, they become greatly aggrieved because now they will lose one another's association. Uh, but what to do? He has to go. And Narutam Das Thakur tells him that um, anyway, we have to leave this body sooner or later. So you kindly go and you serve your spiritual master, you follow his instructions. So he goes there and he serves Shamananda Prabhu. Um, but after some time, uh, and so at that point, the Naratam Das Thakur really feels separation from the Lord uh, because there's no one there with him in that uh, kind of in his generation. His disciples are there, but not kind of his God brothers or God sisters. And so he really becomes deeply absorbed uh, and kind of goes within not talking too much. And soon Ganga Narayan receives the news that Ramachandra Kaviraj has also left the world. He has passed away, he has left. But he, is, he knows that Narutam Das Thakur will become so aggrieved by hearing this that he doesn't give him the news. He says, I will not give him the news. So then the next time he comes to give prasad to Narutam Das Thakur, he doesn't share the news, but by seeing his eyes, Narutam Das Thakur can understand that Ramachandra Kaviraj has also left. And at that point, um, it's clear to Narutam Das Thakur that it's also time for him to leave. So once Ramachandra Kaviraj leaves, then Narutam Das Thakur writes one bhajan, and this bhajan, he is also expressing his great longing to have the association of Ramachandra Kaviraj again. So I will, uh, I was thinking that we can now sing this bhajan. This is one that they sing uh, every morning 
in Mayapurdham, which is uh, the Savarna Shri Gaurapada Padma, which is Shri Krishna Chaitanya Daya Karamori. In this book is page 98. It's a white song book. In the white song book. And in the, in the red and brown one, it's page number 80. And who, yeah, I have more song books, so. Uh, <laughs>
sure how much time we have left. Is it just a, are we done now? <laughs> Sorry, wait, wait, this is done, right? Yeah. It's nine o'clock. Nine. Okay, fine. <laughs> so I'll just uh, end quickly by saying that uh, afterwards, after Ramachandra Kaviraj Goswami leaves, then Narutam Das Thakur tells uh, Ganga Narayan to take him to um, Gambila, I think that's the name of the place. And there, well, uh, Ganga Narayan invites him to the edge of the Ganges. And there he takes him, uh, and uh, Narutam Das Thakur uh, lays down on the bank of the Ganges. And he goes into samadhi, sort of gives up his body. Um, but uh, the Smarta Brahmanas around him, they start to criticize uh, Narutam Das Thakur and his associates that see he is a Shudra because he was materially born in a Shudra family. And see, he, he is leaving his body like a Shudra leaves his body because um, he was, uh, he had said that uh, he was uh, kind of, um, there's different versions of his passing away. Uh, and some versions say that he had instructed that you should burn my body, which was um, not the way in which uh, the sannyasis or the brahmanas would leave their body. So uh, Ganga Narayan at that time, he sees that the brahmanas are criticizing Narutam Das Thakur. And also in great separation, he goes to Narutam Das Thakur, who has left his body, and in, in his ear he whispers, he says, please come back, because they are criticizing you. And if they criticize you, what will happen to them? They will, they will go to hell for criticizing such a great devotee. And when Narutam Das Thakur hears this, he comes back. He's resurrected, so to say. He, he, he manifests himself again. And he comes back just to save the this, this Smarta Brahmanas. A theme that we find in so many lives of so many Acharyas. Lord Jesus Christ, he does this, he says, they do not know what they are doing. My Lord, please save them. Hari Das Thakur does this. Naratam Das Thakur also does this. So even his final parting pastime is a pastime where he shows his great compassion, the great compassion that the devotees have. And so the Brahmanas, uh, when they see it, so Naratam Das Thakur comes back to life and mystically a, a, um, a Brahman thread comes on his body and it glows like gold. And his Brahman thread is glowing and his body is glowing also. And when the Smarta Brahmanas see this, then they realize their folly and they see the golden Brahman thread. I mean, it's a mystical scene. Uh, and so they all come forward and they take shelter at his lotus feet and they beg for forgiveness. They say, please forgive us, please forgive us. We have, we have uh, offended you. And um, after that, Narutam Das Thakur, he converts all the Brahmanas of the land as well. He stays for some time. Uh, and then, uh, uh, once again, he goes back to the forest for his bhajan. And then once again, he tells Ganga Narayan that, please take me back to the Ganges. And this time, Ganga Narayan knows, oh no, it's, this is not good news. Again, he starts to weep that his spiritual master is leaving. All the devotees begin to weep. And Narutam Das Thakur goes for a bath in the Ganges. And he tells his disciples that, uh, I'm feeling very fatigued. Please massage my body while he's in the Ganges. So they start to massage his body. And when they massage his body, uh, milk comes out of his body and it becomes all white. And the whole Ganges starts to become white. And they keep massaging him, that's the instruction they massage. And as they massage, massage, he disappears into the Ganges. So this is uh, uh, the beautiful life of Narutam Das Thakur, his appearance and his disappearance are all glorious. And every day actually in the morning we forget actually the Shri Guru Charanapadna prayers that we sing are written by Narutam Das Thakur. And they're the eighth song in the Prema Bhakta Chandrika, which is eight songs. And it's interesting, some years back I came across this book not knowing what this book was, which book this was. And at the end of this book, or at the beginning, sorry, at the beginning, there's a blessing which said that anyone who, who, who reads this book every day of his life, or chants this book every day of his life, at the end they get the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. This blessing was there in Prema Bhakta Chandrika. And I was thinking when I read that, I was like, why don't we read this book every day? And so I started to look through it, and lo and behold, the eighth song was Sri Guru Charanapadma, the song that we sing every single day. 
So the point being that Srila Prabhupada gave us everything that was most important, everything to take us back home, back to Godhead. And he gave us so many ways to go back home, back to Godhead, that in case if we miss one, something else. So like we, you know, Sansara Dava prayers in the morning. Also, it's said that anyone who chants that every morning, uh, at the end of their life, during Brahma Murat, at the end of their life, they get Golok Vrindavan Dham. So someone might miss Mangal Arati, like myself, you know, from time to time. But if we make it to Guru Puja, and we sing the Guru Puja prayers, then again the blessing is given. <laughs> that if you chant the Guru Puja prayers every single day, to Srila Prabhupada like we're doing every morning, then we go back home, back to Godhead. So, Srila Narutam Das Thakur Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki.